Hey, what's up, big Operation iDroid here, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to hack your 3DS using sound hacks to obtain homebrew on your 3DS. Sound hacks works on all models of 3DS running 9.0 all the way to the latest 11.2 as of the release of this video. But be sure to check the description below to see if this is still working because you may be watching this in the future and there may have been an update or Nintendo could possibly have shut it down. Nevertheless, you may be wondering why would you hack your 3DS? What are the benefits to homebrewing? Well, there's a ton of awesome things you can do with a homebrew 3DS. You can get custom home screen themes. You can play region locked games, play custom 3DS games, emulators, and much more. Now, before we continue with the tutorial, I'm gonna let you know now that there's no real way that this can harm your 3DS. This hack is very safe, but please continue at your own risk. And if you enjoy this tutorial, please make sure to hit that like button as I tried really hard to make this as clear and easy as possible for anyone that may be doing this for the first time. So with all that being said, I hope you enjoy this video and without any further ado, let's head into the tutorial. Alright, homebrewing your 3DS is very simple, but it does require a computer. The process is the same whether you have a Windows or a Mac computer, so just follow along. To begin, if you have an old 3DS, remove your SD card and place it into your computer. Or if you have a new 3DS, use the micro SD management to wirelessly access your SD card through your settings and then head to your favorite web browser on your computer and paste in the URL the link that I have in the description for the homebrew starter kit, which will automatically download a zip file, which you will then unzip and get the starter folder and place it into the root of your SD card. So right on your SD card and not within any folders. Then head back to your favorite web browser and go to the Sound Hacks website that I have linked in the description below and fill out the information here appropriate to your 3DS and then download the M4A. And while you're there, if you have any extra cash laying around, I highly recommend you donate to help support the developers that made this hacks available. I did and I'm pretty happy to support them. Anyways, once you download this sound file, you wanna put that into the root of your SD card as well. So make sure it's not in any folders and directly on your SD card. Then we're gonna head back into our web browser and paste in the URL the link that I have for the other app download. And here you wanna input the information appropriate to your 3DS. So if you have an old 3DS and then here, the version of your 3DS that you can find in your system settings on the top screen at the bottom right hand corner. And make sure that this information is exactly the same as your 3DS is in the settings. So download that other app file and it'll download a .bin file, which you'll also place onto the root of your SD card. And you wanna rename this file to otherapp.bin, but make sure you keep the extension .bin, so just rename it to other app and leave the .bin there. Now your SD card should look exactly like mine, and if you have an old 3DS, you can eject it from your computer and put it back into your 3DS, or if you're using a new 3DS and micromanagement, then you can exit the micromanagement and then open your Nintendo 3DS sound application on your 3DS. Now, if you've never used the sound application, make sure you go through all these little bird prompts because if not, then you'll be having to go through them every time. So make sure you go through all little bird prompts, then go back to the home menu, close the Nintendo 3DS sound application, then go back into the Nintendo 3DS sound application Go through the little bird prompts one more time because they do appear twice and then you want to exit the Nintendo 3DS sound application again, close it, and now when we open Nintendo 3DS sound, we can continue with the tutorial. So just make sure you do that or else you're going to be having to deal with those birds every time you open the application and through this application is actually how we're going to open Homebrew. So what you want to do is go down to SD card and then click on the sound file that's there and once you hit play it'll automatically launch the homebrew launcher on your 3ds and that's how you get homebrew on your 3ds it's that simple now with homebrew there's a ton of awesome things that you can do 
and I'm going to be showing you how to do all those things in this tutorial. So there'll be timestamps in the description so you can see everything. Maybe you just want to get custom themes and you don't want to learn how to get emulators. Then you can just skip ahead to those portions. But we are going to begin with the easiest thing that's already included in the homebrew, which is the region free launcher. So if you have any games from another region that is not for your 3DS, for example, I have a Pokemon Y that's from Japan then I'm able to play this Pokemon Y on my 3DS even though it's from another region by using the region free launcher within the homebrew launcher and as you can see it allows me to play my Pokemon Y from Japan just as if it was a normal game which is pretty cool for anybody that wants to play uh, region exclusive games like if they were only released in Japan and things like that. Anyways. The next thing we're going to learn how to do is how to get custom themes on your 3DS which is one of the coolest things that you can do with your homebrewed 3DS. So to get custom themes you want to head back into your computer, get your SD card back into your computer, open the starter folder in your SD card and then open the themes folder in your SD card and then head to your favorite web browser and paste in the URL the link that I have for the 3DS themes website which is an awesome website that has a plethora of themes available that people have made in the past and uploaded here for others to get and enjoy. Now this website has a ton of themes that I honestly recommend that you guys check out. I'm sure you'll find a theme that you like on here. And of course, if you're looking for a specific theme, like maybe a Zelda theme, then you can use a search function within the website to just find Zelda themes if that's your thing. But anyways, once you find a theme that you like, all you have to do is click on that theme and it's very easy to download it. So once you click on it, you'll get some information about its creator, how many times it's been downloaded and things like that. But to download it, all you have to do is click the download button there and then you can download as many themes as you'd like because once you download the themes and get them into your SD card, you can switch between them. And when you download themes, they'll download as a zip file. So just go ahead and unzip those files that you got from the website and they'll give you folders that you want to place in the themes folder of your SD card. So place those folders in the themes folder of your SD card. Go ahead and launch the homebrew launcher again by going through the Nintendo 3DS sound application. And in the homebrew launcher you want to open the CHMM2 application. There you'll be able to view your themes that are on your SD card on the bottom screen and preview them by pressing Y on the top screen and to install theme all you have to do is select A while you're hovering over it and it'll say installing theme on your bottom screen. Once a theme is installed you can exit CHMM2 by pressing start and selecting exit then from the homebrew launcher you can exit by clicking start and then A to proceed. Then once it boots up your home menu again, you'll see that you now have the theme that you installed. In my case, I installed this awesome homebrew theme, which makes sense because I have homebrew on my 3DS. Anyways, if you ever want to change your theme, you can do it by following the same process in CHMM2. Or if you want to go back to a default Nintendo 3DS theme, you can do it from the home menu. Anyways, if you want to learn how to get emulators and applications, just put your SD card back into your 3DS and if you're getting an emulator, make a folder with the name of the emulator. So if it's Game Boy, name it GB or if it's SNES, name it SNES, whatever the case may be. Then head to your favorite web browser and paste in the URL the link that I have for emulators and applications where here you'll find a ton of games and emulators that you can download. Now the games are segregated by games which are specifically made for the 3DS where you can download by clicking here. In this case, I'm getting Mastermind 3DS. I've never played it, but I want to try it out. And if you want to get emulators, just head back to that same link that you were at before. And under the emulator section, you can download whichever emulator you'd like. In my case, I'm going to download Game Yob, a Game Boy emulator, so I can play Pokemon Prism, the awesome ROM hack on my 3DS. So the process is exactly the same. Click here, and when you arrive at the website, just download the zip file, and you'll be good. So once you have an emulator, of course, you want to get ROMs for it. So you can go ahead and download your ROMs on whatever preferred site that you have. I'll have some linked in the description, but to get Pokemon Prism, you can head to OperationIDroid.com, which will also be linked in the description below and scroll down to the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance ROM hacks where you'll see Pokemon Prism and just click on it and hit download to download Pokemon Prism, which again is an awesome 
Pokemon ROM hack. Once you have your ROM downloaded, you want to go ahead and place that in the folder that we created for our emulator. So in my case, I made a GB folder for my Game Boy emulator. Then you want to head to your starter folder and then the 3DS folder and open the zipped file that you downloaded for your game 3DS custom game and get the folder that is within the 3DS folder and put that into the 3DS folder in the SD card. And the same thing goes for your emulator. Unzip that file, open the 3DS folder within that unzipped file and place the folder that is in the 3DS folder into your 3DS folder in your SD card. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and eject your SD card and put it back into your 3DS or MD wireless transfer if you're on a new 3DS. Now, once you launch Homebrew, you'll see that you have those applications in your Homebrew. So the game that I got was Mastermind. And as you can see, now I have Mastermind on my Homebrew 3DS. May be different for you in case you downloaded a different game, but now you understand the process of how you can put these custom 3DS games onto your 3DS using Homebrew. Anyways, if you put an emulator onto your 3DS, then you'll see that the emulator is now within your Homebrew applications. So in my case, it is GameYob and I can just go ahead and open that. And for those that have never used GameYob, all you have to do is navigate on your SD card to the folder where you put your ROM and then select your ROM and it'll begin to play on GameYob. Now, at first, the game won't cover your full top screen, which is kind of a bummer. So you can actually edit these settings and many other settings by selecting the L or R button or the start button to access the settings now here you'll see the main game settings and the sound settings but the display settings are the most important one where you can change the scaling to aspect where it'll fill up your whole top screen and you can change the scale filter to scale two times which i highly recommend it makes it look a lot nicer and then there's a ton of other settings that you can mess with um, the other important ones are probably the save states and load states that you can find in the game section of the settings um, and all you have to do is just hit save state in order to make a save. Of course, you can mess around with all these settings if you like, and you can save the settings by going to game job and hitting save settings. So it remembers your settings for next time. As I mentioned, there's also save states, which you can use to save or load a state. There's nine save slots in total. So that's pretty awesome. A lot of places where you can save. And if you want to exit the actual settings here all you have to do is select b and it'll take you right back into your game and you can enjoy your emulator that you now have if you're playing pokemon prism as i am or if you're playing any other game then you can just go ahead and enjoy that game and that's pretty much it for the basics of the things that you can do with a homebrew 3ds now there is a lot more things that you can do with a homebrew 3ds like generating pokemon into your sun and moon x and y Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, which I have made a tutorial on in the past. So if you want to learn how to generate any Pokemon into your game, I'll have a tutorial linked in the description below, as well as if you want to learn how to randomize your Pokemon Sun or Moon, I am working on a tutorial on how to do that. So if you all are excited for that, please leave a like and let me know if you'd like to see that by voting on the poll on screen because I am working on it now, but it does take a pretty long time to put that whole tutorial together so i hope to have it ready for you all next week and i hope you enjoy it anyways this is just the basics of hacking your 3ds homebrew is just the beginning of a ton of other amazing things you can do on your 3ds like getting custom firmware and i may do a tutorial on that in the future i'm not exactly sure but if you guys would like to see that as well let me know in the comment section below and I'll try to work on that for the future because there is some pretty awesome stuff that you can do besides homebrew, but does take a lot more time and is a bit more risky, I guess. And that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like as it helps out the video tremendously and I truly appreciate it. As well as comment down below what your thoughts on homebrewing your 3DS and if you're interested in learning more like custom firmware. I'd love to hear what you all have to say as I read all the comments. 
Finally, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe by clicking on my icon on screen now so you don't miss out on any other homebrew tutorials that will be coming out in the future. And check out some of my past homebrew tutorials by clicking on the videos on screen now. And as always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and welcome to the operation.